a lot going on into two hot two uh two morning two on harman and i uh, want to ask her again about the homeless you know she's been one of the consistent voices uh, in support of housing the homeless not just during uh the covid but pre-covid even yeah I also want to ask her about the massive cleanup that uh, we hear is going to be occurring down in Tumon yeah, uh, at the end of the month. And it's something that uh, we were looking at uh, last night and also with um, you know Mayor Hoffman uh, yesterday sending uh, the pictures of that illegal dump at uh, Pago Bay. Uh, as you guys uh, were listening yesterday, we talked with Nick Lee of uh, Guam EPA, and it looks like uh, illegal dumping didn't take a break during the COVID. The illegal dumpers did not stay home. And they're out there uh, trashing our island still. You know, good thing you guys find the time to trash our island. Thank God. Um, that was sarcasm, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, we've got some uh, very unnerving uh, pictures for you guys this morning of, um, you know, one of a, a frequent uh, illegal dumping spot right in the heart of the tourism district. So if we're going to reopen tourism, it looks like we've got some Nagasagas Guam to do first. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, the problem with that, the one place that we're going to show everybody right. is that it's it's always like that. Right. You know, and they've cleaned it up. I know GHRA has held cleanups, GVB, and then it's back to where it was before. Yeah. Does uh, it seem like there's, uh, you know, enough enforcement, I guess you could say? I guess it would be uh, enforcement. And then, you know, uh, and... We're going to talk about this coming up, uh, but to give you a little bit of a reveal, we're talking about the parking uh, parking structure in Tumon, and I think it's a twofold um, issue, a two pronged issue, if you will, is that you have this massive uh, public health hazard. I think it's a public health hazard. It is. I remember when um, I went, you went there, you did a story on it, and yeah, then we're, uh, we're just going to pop the pictures up now. Okay, yeah. and then it went to uh, follow up, like just like, right, right before COVID. Right. We went there because we had heard that the uh, landowner was issued an nov but they couldn't find him so they couldn't actually give him the nov right they should have gotten the marshals to do it or the repo man you know the marshals and the repo man man they could find anybody yeah and you warned me you were like do not go inside do not drive in there do not walk in there because some of the people there are kind of feisty and at first i was like ah, i don't care i'm gonna go try and mm. then but first i wanted to go around the back side of uh, the hotel and I could actually hear them talking, and I could tell, you know, there may have been some alcohol right. involved. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to shoot my video from here. Right. And, and you can see I'm going to leave. And it was terrible. It was so sad. We're playing the That's pictures what, yeah. now. Yeah, we're giving you guys basula for breakfast. Gosh. Look at that. That is that parking garage, abandoned parking garage structure in Tumon uh, by the... Uh, Subway, right? Yeah, it's right behind uh, Blue Lagoon uh, Plaza. Yep. And this is owned by uh, David Sue. Yeah. He's the same person that also owns uh, Verona Resort. Right. Frequent uh, appearances in the news for this type of thing. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, so we went ahead and forwarded these pictures again. God, donuts. I don't know how many times I forwarded pictures of this to Guam EPA. I sent it to uh, Nick Lee last night, and he was like, I'm going to forward it. And I was like, you know what, Nick, you might as well just forward it to the trash can. Forward it to the God Donuts trash can. It's ridiculous. So ridiculous. And, you know, I mean, uh, another prong, I guess, of this is that um, what we hear, and I don't know if it's necessarily how Guam EPA feels, is they're saying, oh, well, this mess is being caused by people who are squatting on this property. That's a lot of trash. And so I've actually spoken to David Sue about this, and he said, hey, I, I closed it up. I blocked it off. Uh, they still go in. I've tried to make deals with them where, hey, you guys are going to uh, be in staying here, you know, be staying here, at least try and clean the place up. And I goes, goes, Guam, clean your area, like my grandpa would say. My grandpa, if he saw that, he'd be like, you know, this is a fire hazard right here, boy. And it is. You go, I mean, there are restaurants, like, right 10 feet away from this huge mess and when i when i went there right next door when i went there there was dead rats in there Mm -hmm. there were snakes hanging from the fence i mean obviously whoever's occupying this building all they do is drink beer all day and throw their freaking beer cans and their beer boxes Mm -hmm. over the edge so it's um pissed me off man i had a hard time going to sleep last night because we i mean i think i've done this (laughs) same damn story Mm-hmm. Ten times, and you know the, the, what the same situation or similar situation is the road uh, in Jigo. Oh God, that's another one. 
and i gotta feel you know the mayor tried i mean they go out there they clean it but it's the same thing the next day it's the same and it reaches a certain point where i get it man i grew up so poor like we couldn't afford and i don't even know what trash service we were using back then but yeah i grew up poor so i understand people can't afford the trash service but (laughs) dad like that doesn't mean you're gonna go throw it in the jungle yeah i mean (laughs) there are ways to get rid of your and i just don't buy it after a while i understand you know and i went on a cruising with lieutenant governor josh tenorio was that last year yeah, I yeah, think it was last year. Yeah. I, I want to find out when that was because I went on a cruising with Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio, and this was one of the issues that we brought up, and he had these great ideas where they were going to do a multi-agency, um, basically an attack of these Ill- illegal dumps, and he was saying, like, well, maybe what we need to do is just eat it and put out the big trash dumpster in the village on certain days. Everybody who's got trash, you just go dump it in there and, you know, go, go on, eat it. We eat so many things. We eat the exorbitant salaries of these political hires. I don't know why we can't eat some expenses that actually do good for Guam. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, you, we talked all this big talk about we're going to put a dumpster and people can go dump and we're going to mobilize DPW. And it's a uh, few and far between. So what will happen is the media will do these stories on illegal dumps. Everyone will get mad. The mayors will get butt hurt. They'll go out, DPW, backhoe, clean up that area by... Uh, Almost by Ukudu going down the pipeline there. Remember, that's a really bad one. Oh, yes. Senator Rogel let it clean up there with uh, the Everson community. Right. And so what ended up happening, and we all know this, he cleaned it up, left it there to be picked up. It wasn't picked up, got re-spread all around. Mm -hmm. Basically, I Because there was so much trash. They couldn't pick up everything. I mean... So I just don't know. I mean, you know, uh, it's just a basic issue. And you can cast blame all around from the mm-hmm. idiots who are d- illegally dumping to the senators who don't do anything about it through i don't know enforcement or, or some kind of legislation there got to be something i mean doing anything right now is better than what we're doing because we're doing nothing zero yeah we have all these nonprofit organizations that step up that do their part and help volunteer to clean up our island, the beaches, everything. There's, But it's, I don't know, it's just so frustrating. Like, yeah. why can't we get our act together? And especially our people, man. You know, I'm, I'm not going to excuse away. And, you know, we can blame the senators. We can blame, you know, uh, the lieutenant governor for not putting the dumpster out there. There's a lot of people to blame. But ultimately, no one is putting a gun to your head and making you dump your trash where you're not supposed to dump it. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the the bottom line is the buck stops with your illegal dumping ass. Well, I didn't want to start the show like this. Yeah, well, how did we get here? I don't here? know. I just <laughs> <laughs> it's that damn video. Can you just play it one more time, Jay? <laughs> it just put me last night. I was in a good mood. I was like, lottie dottie. I made myself some homemade salmon pokey that was mm-hmm. spicy. And I had my good dinner, and then... And you sent me pictures. Then I got the pictures, and I was like, what the (laughs) hell? Oh, no! (laughs) Hell no! Not again! (laughs) I called my source. I was like, these are the pictures that from the story I did a few months ago before COVID. And they were like, no, that's from uh, today. (laughs) Oh, what? Yeah, so that's why we started the morning cranky. (laughs) And before we went on, I don't know if you guys saw us talking. I was like, come on, Bree. Let's just go on. Let's just power through we're just putting a good hard four hours and we'll clock out and it's friday and you know we made it and she was like yeah okay let's go sunshine let's go da, da, da. and then yeah, boom right out the gate illegal dumping <laughs> i hate you <laughs> it's just uh obviously if you love our island and this is not ruining your breakfast you don't have a heart and so this is going to be part of uh what we talked about yesterday with jerry perez mm-hmm and the big, uh, massive uh, cleanup that's going to be happening uh, down in Tumon and extending out uh, from what he, what he was saying uh, to the parks, you know, to the beaches, uh, to anywhere that uh, anyone who is visiting Guam might go and, and see some trash. So, yeah, I think it's uh, good. They were saying that was going to be more towards the end of the month. Yeah, they said that I think the last weekend of the month. But you don't got to wait till the end of the month. Yeah, you don't. You, don't. you can go out. <laughs> And the, the beach I run to in uh, Epan, man, it was, um, I, I, and I talked about this, when we, uh, when the COVID left Guam and we started just reopening everything because COVID's gone, uh, people started going back to the beaches. And when people start going back to the beaches, 
they start littering. And so there's this one beach where there's this bunch of trash and stuff. And I went there uh, the other day and it was just annoying. Went there yesterday and someone had bagged it all up and left a little sign. And the sign said something along the lines of, you have a beautiful island. Let's keep it that way. Mm-hmm. And just by looking at that sign, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's someone who's not from here. And sometimes, uh, sadly, what it takes for a lot of us... Uh, hard-headed people to get something through to our head is when a visitor says something when somebody who's not from guam says something you know man you guys got a beautiful island why are you trash it like this that oh my god that just hits so hard mm-hmm. so yeah we got we got to do our part nagusgus guam uh and th- those pictures are just one spot in tumon and we got you know more there's more people are sending me uh, all kinds of illegal dumping uh pictures the, vi- the pictures in chalampago or Pago, right, Pago Bay, Bay. Yeah, yeah, that's nuts. And we've I've, we've seen that. I think was it Jason? Jason might have been the one, or maybe it was Ken, where we did the live stream on Earth Day uh, last year of uh, that beach at Pago Bay. It was terrible. Were you there, Jace? Yeah. yeah, that was terrible. I didn't realize how bad it was. not like I said yesterday, until we turned the corner on onto the shore. You, you, Ken, and I, we, we took our streaming gear down there. Well, and la- we ladies like, and gentlemen, Jason Solis. Hello. Uh, yeah, that was. That was not pretty. It wasn't. Yeah. It was and that's, a that's a very delicately way of, of saying, I mean. There's I mean, a comment here, guys. Peaceful protest for Clean Our Island. Oh, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> but you, you know what they, what, and you know, Nick, Nick Lee, you know, oh, you reference him. With, the rats yeah. are basically like waiting there because, you know, I mean, they, they're attracted to the smell. They're vermin. They breed disease. They're, they're coming. And, you know, people, people are saying in the chat room right now, and they were like, you know, yes, let's do the dumpsters. Please clean up the island. You know, um, one thing that people have brought up, you know, not not just on um, this morning's live stream, but also on Twitter, people were like, "Why do locals have to take time out of their day?" I mean, yeah, it is our island, and it, it you know, if you want to go to the you know, the island is our mother, and you don't disrespect your mother, so we have to take care of it. But, dude, I could be working on school projects. I could be trying to get into you know, get a job, something like that. I got to take four hours out of my Saturday morning. I could be like resting in bed. I got to go there and clean up somebody else's mess. Yeah, it's, and it's uh, always like can. that. Yeah, and they're just like, ah, the locals will clean it up. It's cool. You know, that's that's. I mean, that literally and figuratively is messed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, and you know, they act like it's so complicated. But I felt like when I strolled with Lieutenant Governor Josh, it seemed pretty easy. Yeah, we need. I mean, it's obviously a problem. People can't afford to dump their trash. They're going to dump it in the jungle. So let's give them some place to dump it once a week. Maybe Daddy Doe, it's on a, you know, Wednesday. Hey, no questions asked. Come throw your stuff. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when we talk about being under the COVID and going back to normal, it just pisses me off that this is normal for us to Mm -hmm. start trashing our island again. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when we were going out, when we were doing those starting lineups, Chris, I know because, you know, you and I went to Chalabaga. Yeah, you're my dumping partner. Yeah. uh, How many did we go to? We went went to to too many, Jason. We went to too many. The the Ukudu Papa and that that was nasty i mean the the smell there was i mean thank god that you know live streaming doesn't have smell of vision because that that was bad uh we also did what was that and way back in um in jigo right i mean i'm from jigo i didn't even know what's, G- what's that area called Bree? Chalon ramirez is it, was it yeah, ramirez? ramirez it yeah. was super far in there what's her name bus stop betty uh, right she held so many cleanups there uh, god i forgot her first and name. i mean it's not i mean you you can say okay it's it's discarded cars, it's diapers, it's, you know... Toilet bowls. It's everything. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, couches, it's the Assam black, black tea stuff. But, I mean, it's also, you know, refrigerators. It's things that you would never think that, you know, people are the car batteries. Like, how do you drive into the jungle with five refrigerators in the back of your truck? Yeah, and, seriously. And no one says anything. Mm-hmm. You know, and these, these dumb sites... It's Vani- like, vanity mirrors for the house. Oh, it's like one way in, one way out. And so when people are going in there with like all this mountain of trash on their truck, mm-hmm. how do we not have more people I don't, I, does anybody remember, calling the cops or what? You know? Does anybody remember way back when, when Guam EPA used to have this uh, this uh, collection where you could drop off like your old batteries? Do you right. remember yeah, that? I remember it was way that. back in the day. Was Hasu Guam. I, was it Hasu Guam? Yeah. There yeah. used to be a lot of good programs yeah, back in the and day. Yeah, they used to do that. Yeah. I mean, the People DEA does like a similar program with, you know, like d- dispose of your... your take prescri- back your, you're right. Yeah, right, the take right, back yeah. pr- your prescription mm-hmm. meds, no questions mm-hmm. asked. 
just you know come in mm-hmm. drop it off and everything and they'll, they'll get rid of it you know that's what's really missing is uh th- this generation like i don't know if it's the you know uh maybe it's people who aren't our age kind of calling the shots but you know guys it's proven what works jingles marketing campaigns mm-hmm. education campaigns and maybe we're just not I mean, and I understand, I'm not making excuses. Like, they're not, oh, they're dumping because they're not educated. No, they're dumping because they're idiots. Okay. But we still got to do our part. And the thing is, the kids hear it when they're young. It sticks with them. I mean, we're talking about Hasu Guam. And this was just, basically, it was, like I said, it was a day where Gov Guam just ate it. Yeah. We're going to eat it. We're going to open up. You guys come and dump whatever you got. Or we'll worry about yeah, it. Yeah, they okay, used well, to have it, like, periodically. I they remember. need to bring it back. Yeah. To- Let's give some context to like the young people watching right now, and you know, for for all of you who are like around. I'm 45. Yeah, I'm 46. You're. <laughs> I shared it. You're, you're <laughs> around that age, yeah. let's say, <laughs> if if yeah. not younger, right? Okay, for people our age, right? If we were out at a family function, and uh, child rearing and the discipline of children is a lot different these days, right? Um, but Chris, you brought up your grandpa, right? If your grandpa actually saw you take like a, oh, God, a drink, a drink container, or the cardboard, or something like that, and just discard it aside, what would he do to you, my friend? I wouldn't even think to do that. I wouldn't even get to the thought, and before I even thought of it, I'd be whacked upside the head. Oh, no, okay, you got. I can, I can just see my tata right now, like walking into Gandhi Heights. All I, because I tried to do that once, me and my cousin, because we're idiots, right? All I hear was this. Behind me, I turned around and my entire world was in slow motion, and it's my tata stripping the tang and tangan. Yep, I got it on the back of the knee, the soft part. Ooh, that stung. Or the casas, the back scratcher was always another one. Oh yeah, <clears throat> but what? that that's what you got because yeah. our yeah. our our elders were this like was the, this was the pre CPS era. Yeah, they Nobody were they were like the belt? they're like don't do belt. that. I got the belt. I got the extension cord. My my relatives would have they had I got the extension cord too. What's well, it starting to turn into Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> <laughs> the Fifty Shades of Grey of child abuse. Okay. <laughs> our our, our topic got, for this morning in the chat room, what have you been spanked with? You know the Navy utility belt? It has like a little metal part of the Ooh. end. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I remember going to school with little L's on my <laughs> thigh from that little metal part. Uh, man, my mom used to wear those. You guys remember when those wooden like clogs were in? It was like wood and then it had the one strap over your foot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, bro. You think getting... A Zori thrown at you, or did one of your uncles like take take like the big belt like you the try, Budweiser belt, you try and, then, and they go tap, tap, and they and they slap the two sides together. Man, you hear <laughs> that? You, you hear that leather clap, and yeah, your your entire worldview changes in a second. You're like, oh boy. Me and my cousins used to go and uh, like because we knew when we were gonna get it because there was a buildup. Like they would start yelling, they're gonna yell 45 minutes before the whooping. So they're yelling. We'd run in and put on like five underwears and two extra shorts, and <laughs> you would get it. And then when they found out you're wearing all that extra padding, you'd really get it. Anyway, did uh, you guys ever have to carry books? Yeah, nose in the circle. That? I used to have to. What'd carry you do books. to carry books, Bree? Well, if one got in trouble, everybody got in trouble. It's a team thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just me and my two brothers. But we need know. to institute that for the government. <laughs> like, one of you guys screw up, you're all okay. going down. Okay. <laughs> Our our chat room, our comment stream is the best. You know, they, they jump on these conversations. And I guess when we started, you know, how how were you disciplined when you're a kid? Child abuse today, discipline back then. It's rather <laughs> it's a rather active conversation. So you, you guys go in and jump on that. We'll try and bring some of those comments up. There's a lot. Um, yeah. Head knocks, says Christina Babata. Ooh, head knocks. Head knocks. Yeah, that, that's what Chris was saying. You know, upside the head, however do, you want to. Yeah. What, was, it, was it just Tillich? Was it just Desca? No, that was. That wasn't enough. That was minor. Never enough. That was the appetizer. Okay, we're gonna, start, we're gonna start with a good tea lick, a course of tea lick, and then you know desca, and then we move on to go pick your. That's the worst is when they make you go pick your stick. Okay, and then now let's bring this more current, right? With with the both of you as parents of young children, if you saw your kids do that, what would you say, and then what would you do to make them aware that they were doing something wrong, and then to correct their actions? Well, first of all, the kids nowadays can't handle it. Yeah, they can't handle it, and explain we, because uh, well, I I really think about this a lot. I think our generation, because we're like the last generation to really get our ass whooped and kicked, mm-hmm. and it shows, I think we see our kids and we want to shelter them from all that. And then there's always a lot of sheltering you do as a parent, right? Um, and it's a balance of like, how much do I want to shelter my kids and how much do I want to let them know that you know the world's crazy or whatever, but they just can't handle it because we're trying to protect them from everything. And like mm-hmm. when I think about the whoopings I got when I was a kid, and think about me doing that. There's no way I would ever do that to my kids. Yeah. 
but I, and then I still love my mom and my all my family, and I know that they were doing at the time what they thought was best. And for the most part, I think it kind of worked. Yeah, it turned out yeah. all right. Well, again, it makes for the it, most part, but it some, makes an impression physically right. too. But some people who who were disciplined like that. They think it's the norm, and then they grow up, and they discipline mm-hmm. their kids that way, and then we read about them in the news. Okay, real quick. Yeah. Uh, Sabrina actually brought up a – she made a topic trend because somebody – Alan Addison Nicholas is saying, kneel on rise and hold the books. Yes. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Yes. See, and then if you drop the book, like they put another book on top. Love you, Mom. That's why, you got, that's why <laughs> you're good at those kettlebells. Huh? Okay, and <laughs> Cynthia Cepeda says, uh, kneeling with books, arms stretched out for a long time. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that – that sounds like tryouts for like basketball, you know, when you would have to like hold the weights and like be up against the wall. Sometimes my mom would change it up though, because you know, whooping is one thing, but we would get a whooping and then it would be like right 500 times. Oh, okay. mm. I will not disrespect my that. relatives or I love my mom or well, I I'm, not, I'm half Howley, so of course I me was like go and face the wall. Right. So. But uh, Glenn Luhan, once again, how is Glenn not a top fan at this point? Nanny Poodles. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, Nanny Poodles. <laughs> Oh, you're Nanny Poodles, right? <laughs> Glenn has a laundry list. He goes, okay, here we go. It's it's a rather lengthy list. Slippers. Oh, yes. Head knocks. <laughs> extension cord. Belt. Tangan tangan, which was, you know, what this I, again. Is what, this is what I mean, like 50 shades of gray. Yeah. Just get the visual. <laughs> like, and grandpa and grandma rolling out the, the drawer. And and, all, everything and lastly, and perhaps more, most dramatically, cowtail. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. All right. And I don't know what note. happened there, but the whole hour went by and we didn't even do the news. So let's oh, uh, let's okay. do the news, guys. Right. There you go. A little basula and a little abuse for breakfast. Mm. Thanks for taking that uh, stroll down abuse lane with us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and uh, good morning to our Edward R. Murrow award-winning social media network. Can they take that back? <laughs> uh, can they rescind that? <laughs> I hope not. Uh, yeah. No, I think we got it already. We're good, right? Yeah, we're good. Don't answer their emails. Uh, It's 6.52 now. As we always do, usually a little bit earlier in the hour, uh, let's start uh, start with a a dive into the